I'm Wesley. Hi, I'm Ramon. So today I want to talk about unit testing. Um, I do think it's like a core thing we need to do as a developer, which is like a thing I would like to do. So I want to keep it simple, readable and easy. So today I want to show you some stuff about a couple of packages. If we combine them, then the unit testing will be quite a lot more fun to do. Sounds like a challenge, making it fun. <laughs> <laughs> it is, but it's, it's getting cleaner. So All right. I've got a solution over here, just a bit simple. Uh, it's just a standard ASP.NET Core API, uh, which is .NET 6. It has one controller, which is the employee controller, just a create and a get, that's it. And it also has a repository, uh, which uses for the demo uh, EF Core. Um, it's not an integration test or something like that, so we're not going to really see this, but just for the sake of it and make it a complete example, it's there. Yeah. Uh, but we're not going to test this one. We're going to test the controller, which is the part for now. So we're going to test a get and we're going to test a create. I've got two projects over here. So let's first go to the, well, all the, the not using the packages <laughs> version, um, which is quite bloated. Um, it uses only X, X unit and the rest is, well, actually custom made. So nothing like mocking and that kind of stuff. So for now, what do we have? Um, we have a test, which is the employee controller specific, which is for the create. And we're gonna create it over here, get a result, and we're gonna compare it. A um, Couple of things I'm doing here. So we've got some sort of mock employee repository. Quick for who doesn't know that, it's just to make sure the only thing we're gonna test is the controller because the implementation of the repository is not relevant for this test case. Of course, you want to make sure everything works fine together, but that's gonna be an integration test or a flow test or some kind of test which is not unit. Yep. We're gonna focus on only the unit and this is the controller in this case. So I mocked it and the mock is just basically uh, an implementation of the interface which is used. And the only thing it does is create in the create, we're gonna return a default thing, which is just a new employee, which is an ID and a name. And for the get async, there's a list, which is fixed on a couple of values. That's it. So we're gonna go to the test. Uh, what it does is it has an employee entity over here. We're gonna send it through, create, and then we need to compare the two. Uh, though, if we're gonna do the comparing with XUnit, so we're gonna see if it's equal. Mm -hmm. It's gonna check the reference for the object, but it's not the same object as what is returned. So we're gonna encounter a problem where it says the object is not equivalent to the other or, or the same. Um, so in this case, I just made it a Newtonsoft uh, a serializer just to make sure it's the same, but that's already an issue. Yeah. Because if I'm gonna do stuff with JSON, which is not really, like a weird thing to do with controllers. Um, yeah, I could break it over here. It, yeah, it, it, it feels like a detour from what you actually want to test. It actually it, is. So it's quite annoying. Of course, I'm, I'm able to check, like I want to only check these properties and that kind of stuff, but it's gonna make it more bloated than it already is. Yeah. So a couple of issues here. I need to mock my interface uh, all by my own, which is annoying. I need to make sure it serializes. I have defined the, uh, the objects which I need, so that's always the same value. And of course, it's not always going to happen, but it could be that you're checking a specific name, for example, mm -hmm. uh, like Jake. Uh, and if you change it to uh, John, it could break, theoretically. So I don't want that. I want to be a bit more abstract, just to make sure my unit tests are like a bit better than the previous one. So. All these problems uh, are a bit combined in the solution. So I've got another unit test, which uses a couple of uh, packages. Uh, the core packages are autofixture, mm -hmm. mock, that's with a Q, not a CK. And we have fluent assertions, and it's built on XUnit. Uh, so the packages are automock, which is autofixture, which includes mock. And it also includes an XUnit version for the artifact package. So it integrates better into the testing platform. And Fluent Assertions, what each uh, package is doing, uh, I'll explain a bit later. 
So for now, I'm gonna go to the test and we're gonna see what kind of magic happens over here. So this is it. This is the whole test compared to what it was, which is a bit easier to maintain, to write, to, to do stuff with. A um, couple of things that happen over here. Uh, it's all, always a theory um, because it injects some parameters mm -hmm. like objects over here. It has some sort of mock uh, and that's where the MOQ comes into play. Uh, what, what it is, it, it can mock an interface, actually implementations of classes as well, but it's a bit tricky. So normally you shouldn't do that. You need a really good use case to do that, but normally you wouldn't. In this case, I've got an interface and all it does is it creates a mock implementation on which I can say, like, if you call this endpoint with specific parameters or like any parameter at all, always return this value. Okay. And I can do that on multiple different kinds of methods. So in this case, I've got a mock on the create for the employee repository. And everything which is an employee should return a specific, well, in this case, expected object. Though the weird thing is, it's not really defined over here. You only see it as a parameter and that's it. And that's where the next part comes into play, which is the auto mock data. And with, that's the combination or, or actually the artificial combination with XUnit. Mm -hmm. So if I press F12, there is like an implementation on auto data attribute. And that's an artificial in combination with XUnit. And what it does, it uh, random generates all the values which you put in the parameters. So what you saw in the method previous here, you have an employee and all it does, it says like, okay, we have an employee and what we're gonna do with auto fixture, it will just randomly generate according to a specific schema. So for mm -hmm. instance, strings are generated as the name of the property with a GUID attached ah. to it. So it's sort of random, sort of isn't as well, but it makes it random enough to make sure it's gonna be fine. And can you also set them the values yourself? Like if you want to test with specific values yeah. or? Yeah, that's an option. Um, because I made it a specific implementation of the, the, well, the class which is already there. Mm -hmm. I have the option to create a factory, which is iFixture. And that's uh, the whole generated value uh, or thing which generates your values. And I can just customize how it generates all the kind of all stuff. Right. So we've got customize. In this case, it's just a standard customization but I could always add something extra over here. So if I open it, you could see create, which is just, I want to create a specific value, mm -hmm. which is also does <coughs> like below the surface uh, with employee entity, for example. And you can just add something like employee or something like string, which will in that case, just run do it. All right. All right. Or whatever you want, uh, even multiple layers of depth in objects. Mm -hmm. Though make sure it's not like looped. You can make sure it's, it's gonna limit to a, a specific amount of loops, but yeah. Yeah, it's not gonna be fun. I can imagine uh, your test is gonna take uh, quite a while. Uh. Yeah, it's gonna take quite a while and in the end it will throw exceptions if you're not limiting it. So that's <laughs> a bit annoying. So in this case, I have a couple of options just to make sure um, I can customize all my kind of stuff. Um, in this case, we're not gonna do that. It's gonna be a bit more complicated, but no. you can make customizations over here. So in this case, you could say, I've got an employee, uh, which has a name, and I want the name always to be John Doe, for example. Yeah. Uh, we are able to set it over here. So every employee, which is in my test, will generate it with the name John Doe, which is really cool. Also, enums, I, actually any type of object, yeah, whatever so you, you want. So you can determine the boundaries of the data that you want, so to make it as real as possible. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, true. Awesome. So the other thing which was over here was some sort of frozen uh, attribute, which the only thing it does is when you attach frozen to it, mm -hmm. the attribute which is next to it, in this case, the mock I employee repository, it will maintain the same instance of the object which is beside it for every instance in the parameters. Okay. So what do I mean by that? Uh, we have a mock of the iEmployee repository, but I want to use it for the employee controller. And in this case, it's gonna generate employee controller below. Mm -hmm. But because I added the frozen attribute, it will instantiate the same instance over here, as well as in the employee controller over here. 
All right. And in that case, I don't have to bind it to the employee controller, add it through the new construction. Uh, it will just randomly generate. And the fun thing is, if you have something you don't have to use in unit test, like an iLogger, because I'm not really interested in that case, mm -hmm. I can just ignore it. It will generate it for me, which is fine. Um, it, every interface is randomly generated with a mock, so it will always implement it. So even if you would extend your code, add additional interfaces yep. for new functionality, yep. the old test will still keep on uh, going working. Yes. Awesome, that's easy. It yeah. will, it will. So in this case, the only thing I have is the mock. I'm going to set it up. I'll say create, please, my employee, which is in this case an employee. I'm giving it to it. But mm -hmm. I'll check an expected version because the expected is returned in the returns async of the method. Yep. So in the end, the create should return the expected as mentioned above. And the other issue we had was comparing the two options because it's checking the object reference instead of the values. Mm -hmm. And the nice thing about fluent assertions, which is all about asserting the value, which, well, is it, is it good according to your rule set? In this case, it has an option with be equivalent to. So we all have a should, some objects should be a specific uh, validation, mm -hmm. assertion, and in this case it's be equivalent to, which only checks the specific properties, which is in the object, without reference type. So we'll just check all the properties. It has a name on the one side. It also has a name on the, on the other side. Oh, is it the same? Yes, it is. So that's good. So no JSON, XML, or whatever you want to, no shortcuts. It will just do it for you, which is really cool. So in this case, I can just, well, for the sake of it, both tests <laughs> should be fine. <laughs> if I didn't mess it up, uh, at least. So let's not hope it's going to be the demo uh, effect. <laughs> <laughs> it's a demo effect, yeah. So that's quickly going to run. Okay, maybe a quick question in the meanwhile, while it's running. Uh, if you, so you could inject the, uh, the mocked uh, instance uh, with the frozen tag, of course. Mm -hmm. But let's say I have some functionality uh, that I also uh, always want to mock. So I have a function and I want to make sure that every function also gets the mocked. Is it, would it, it, does it still integrate with uh, something like a setup function? So the, the fun thing is, is you have the combination of the frozen attribute mm -hmm. and the mock implementation. Um, and what we talked previously about, you can customize stuff over here. So uh, what you could same, do, uh, yeah. yeah. What uh, you could okay. do is like if you have something of an interface or a mock interface, you can always implement it in a specific way. For cool. example, the iEmployee cool. repository could always be implemented as a mock with a specific setup already. So it's awesome. whatever you want to do. You can customize all your things over here. You can even add a frozen uh, attribute to it, or actually, I think it's over here. Freeze. Ah, there. Yeah. So it will freeze the entity for all your tests. Oh, um, that's awesome. So you could even like go to a uh, setup with EF Core and like freeze a specific implementation so it doesn't go to the database. Could be. It's a bit annoying because DB sets is not an interface and that kind of stuff. So don't try to get your hands on it. It's, it's really annoying. It, yeah. it could work. But it gives you a experience. lot of control over setting up your general yeah. test environment. And then yeah. when writing tests, you only have to focus on writing the tests. And that's the fun thing. Uh, do I want another property or something? Do I want another employee? I'll just add it over here. Employee, which is employee number two. And it's already done. I have an employee. I can do whatever with it, what I want. And that makes it really extendable and easy to write, maintain the tests. Um, and makes it kind of bit of fun, actually, because it's clean. <laughs> and yeah, it's no, uh, weird to say, but it actually is. Yeah. So. yeah, I'm eager to try it out myself as well. Uh, I see some good use cases for this. <laughs> cool. It's going to save me some time. I hope so. Well, at least it saved me some time, so I'm quite happy. Well, that's it, actually. Really simple and easy to set up. That's it. Thank you for watching. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>